Hello and welcome to this new recording of Room Edit 3D version 3. This is a Forge Viewer extension which demonstrates how you can move building elements inside the Forge Viewer and update the Revit BIM based on that input in real time using Socket IO. This is based on Philip Leifsma's Forge Boilers .node.js. If you look at his master branch, you'll see that he has a sequence of different steps in a rising order of complexity, which demonstrate uh, basically all you need to know about making use of the main Forge components and the viewer. I added a new branch to this called Room Edit 3D with a viewer extension and the viewer extension enables me to pick an element in the Forge viewer and translate it and communicate those changes back to the desktop. So let's look at that running live. I deployed this web server to Heroku and it's running there under room edit 3 dv 3heroqueappcom If I click on user data, it will prompt me to log in to access my projects on A360. I've already logged in previously, so it just picked up my existing credentials. And now it's loading the hubs that I have access to and populating those with the projects. Here's a sample project, Room Edit 3D, that I've used in the past to demonstrate this, with some building elements, a very simple model. And this is the standard Forge viewer. I have a link here to provide me information about this application or to load a viewer extension. I click on Start to load the viewer extension and this new icon appeared with the transform tools. These transform tools come from Philips JavaScript library of viewer extensions. It implements a rotate tool and a translate tool. I'm only interested in the translation. So I'll click on that and that enables translation of building elements. If I click on a building element, I have a widget that enables me to drag that. I can turn on the JavaScript debugger to get an idea of what's happening in the background. Here's the message telling me that this viewer extension was loaded and I've added some console log information to tell me when I've finished dragging an element and then from that element to extract its external ID which corresponds to the Revit unique ID and the translation vector, the offset. This message here is generated by the tool, the translate tool, and transmitted from the translate tool to the actual viewer extension, which then in turn uses Socket.io to broadcast this to the world in general to any client who's interested in this message. So now let's go over to Windows and start up. First of all, I've got here the Room Edit 3D application, which is a Revit add-in, which applies that translation to the Revit BIM live. But before we look at that, I'll simply start up the Room Edit 3D socket tests. I'll set that as a startup project and start debugging. This is a simple console application. It immediately says, OK, I connected. So it's up and running. And now if I click on that and drag it, you can see that a message is transmitted via the socket IO broadcast and the unique Revit unique ID, external ID, and the translation vector are communicated across. So let's stop debugging that and set up the Revit add-in as the startup project instead. 
and start debugging that. This will load Revit. Inside of Revit, I need to launch the add-in, listening for these changes. One additional little twist is that any number of people could be running this viewer extension simultaneously in different models. So if I start up this same model in my local Revit instance, uh, I might be receiving messages intended both for this model and for many others as well. Let's close these. I can get the model displayed at the edge of the window and shrink the viewer a little bit. Um, initially, I'm not subscribed to any changes. I need to go to the add-ins panel and click on external tools, command room edit 3D app to subscribe to the socket IO broadcasts. Once that is done, I can then click on an element here, drag it, see the changes being applied. Let's select another element there, drag that, and you can see how the room immediately expanded according to the movement that I applied in the Forge viewer. If I turn this a little bit up, we can look into the rooms and pick this table instance. If I click on that, you can see that it immediately updates in the Revit BIM. One thing to be aware of is that Revit implements a lot of functionality and intelligence in keeping the building information model synchronized. For instance, in this case, we have this table is a group of furniture, including a round dining table plus the chairs. Forge knows nothing about this, so here in the Forge viewer you can see that the chairs have remained exactly where they were. If we pick another table, you can see the same thing happening. I move the table in the Forge viewer and the entire group is moved in the Revit bin. So that's enough to demonstrate the basic implementation. All of the documentation is available from the GitHub repository. So this is github.com autodesk-forge forge-boilers.node.js tree room edit 3D because I am on the room edit 3D branch of this repository. I discuss the Forge components, the prerequisites, how to set up this sample. You can actually run it with a single click by deploying to Heroku. And at the same time, you need to install the Room Edit 3D application Revit add-in to ensure that it's running and load the same model in Revit as in the Forge viewer. All of the different steps have been extensively implemented, mainly on the blog. And this is part of a suite of samples demonstrating how to connect to desktop and the cloud. Started off with the Room Editor app a couple of years ago, which displays a simplified 2D representation of the building model and demonstrates graphical editing of furniture family instance locations plus textual editing of the element properties. Then I followed that up with the fire rating cloud and a MongoDB web server demonstrating real-time round-trip editing of shared parameter values. This is a much simpler sample that has no graphical interface at all, but also it does not interact with Forge. Neither of these two have anything to do with Forge, and they're actually completely independent of all Autodesk functionality except for Revit itself. Now that we're starting to work with Forge, I implemented the same kind of functionality using this Forge viewer and the extension. The first version was sort of hard-coded to a specific model and needed editing in order to handle other models. Now this incarnation 
uses a selected model stored in A360 and makes it very easy for you to test and run this yourself with any model you choose. So I hope this gives you lots of ideas for your own applications and that you see how easy it is to connect Forge and the desktop applications or in general connecting desktop and the cloud. Good luck, have fun and please let us know how you get on with this. Bye bye.